feel it in the very core of my being. And I feel it here so strongly in this group, a hub with that inspirational love that's flowing through everybody, that this is a perfect place for me to offer something that I've been working on privately. And I want to share it in love and see if it is a power that can continue to empower us through the crisis to the next stage of our evolution. And I want to give it to you. It's my favorite vision. It's the vision of that wheel. Let's see if it comes on. I, I want to start out with the idea that I believe all the work that all of us are doing, whether it be in Liberia or San Francisco or Boise, Idaho, where I was last week, or anywhere in the world, that there is a tendency in nature to create ever more complex systems, from molecules to cells to animals to humans to ecologies to worlds. And we are literally one fraction of a second from the nonlinear connection of that which is creative, loving, and innovative. And we're going to experience in our lifetime what I call a planetary awakening or planetary birth experience. There is no way fast enough to get through the set of global emergencies unless nature has a pattern toward higher order, higher complexity, higher consciousness, higher freedom, or we would never have gotten here from subatomic particles. <laughs> Anytime I lose courage, I think, well, how did we get here <laughs> from subatomic particles to us sitting in precisely now in this room? So when, as I began to do the research, what is the meaning of our power? Where are we going that is good? What could we possibly see? I, I finally realized from many different quadrants, from many different religions, from philosophers, that actually what's happening is planet Earth is connecting. Look at that from Liberia. That's not just a nice picture from Liberia. That's the global mind turning on. Yes. That, that's the nomosphere, the thinking layer of Earth. That's Tara de Chardin's work. The thinking layer of Earth is about to get its collective eyes. It's huge. And within the thinking layer of Earth, are all the intelligence, the cultures, the sophistication, the technology of humanity, which if it goes wrong, can destroy everything. But if it goes towards the benign, towards the glory, towards the beauty, small islands of coherence can turn that entire noosphere on to global intelligence. Yeah. Yes, bring it and on. And it has to be quick. And therefore, the metaphor that it is a planetary birth of a planetary organism just beginning to take our first coordinated breath, just noticing that none of our institutions on this earth are capable of connecting a planet to cooperate and co-create in our full potential. Therefore, <laughs> it is really interesting because no matter how, uh, I call this the principle of rising impotence, is the higher up you get, the harder it is to change. So what hap what's happening to Obama, he has the full grassroots type of interactive support, whatever your politics is, that was an uprising. It's like in Iran, look what's happening in Iran. Yes. It's an uprising of the people, but when they get up to where those systems hold, it's harder and harder to change. <laughs> Therefore, the logic is that those of us who are not at the head of existing organized religions, global corporations, nation states, or academic institutions, 
Is there anybody here head of a nation state? <laughs> no. no. I don't know anybody, actually. <laughs> All right. All right, now head of a nation state, head of an organized religion. Those folks are holding the fort for this to show up. And because they can't do it, they're structured into separation and competition. They're holding it because you don't want the complete infrastructure to collapse. They're holding it while this networking speeds up. And what I want to say today is I think there's a shared goal that everything and everyone working in any way towards sustainability, compassion, love, creativity, innovation in the future. And the, the goal, as I phrase it, is a planetary birth experience in our lifetime. When there is a sufficient connectivity of that which is creative, so that that global mind, global intelligence, and global heart emerges with our first planetary smile. <laughs> and we open our collective eyes, heart, and intelligence, and we find that we're in a universe filled with life, filled with intelligence, filled with resources, and that a combination of cultivating and sustaining and creating life on this earth and opening ourselves up towards our destiny in a universe of trillions and trillions of planetary systems. Yes. Is exactly the moment we've been born into. Mm -hmm. But because we've never seen another planet go through this. It's like a mother who's just about to give birth and never heard of giving birth to a baby. Wow. It would be horrible. Wow. <laughs> it would be painful. And it is painful and it is dangerous. But I think that the overall visionary goal, and I'm sure if Charlie Gay is hearing this, he's going to really think about how to get it done. Where is he? <laughs> Charlie, are you here? Charlie. Uh, <laughs> I can envision a planetary birth experience where the music and the creativity and the open hearts are connected and the human race actually does exactly what Teilhard de Chardin said. We connect heart with heart, center with center, and his language, he called it the Christification of the Earth. He was a, a Catholic Jesuit paleontologist, never, never uh, published by the church in his lifetime. But he had that vision. And I would say from all the meditations, all the good works, everything that's happening now, if we could scan the field right now and just feel it in our nervous systems like we felt this man from Liberia, we would say, there's enough of us here, there's everything we need, mm -hmm. and we are one fraction of a second from yes. that nonlinear connectivity, and the system jumps to the next order. I, I will ask you all to hold that as a vision that is innate in the way planetary organisms connect and co-create. That we're not just making this up by human will alone. We know that you can speak of the eternal aspect of God. But what I wanted to speak of today really is the evolving aspect of God. I want, if you look at that diagram, do you see that core of the spiral? Yes. For me, that core of the spiral is the universal designing intelligence of the evolutionary God, of the evolutionary divine, of the implicate order. You can religious language, scientific language, evolutionary language, intuitive language, but the ultimate reality of that core of the spiral, it's divinely intelligent. It has gone through the formation of every turn on that spiral, and you know where it resides right now? In you and me. Mm -hmm. 